Hello, everyone. Hi. So, yeah, mistakes, that's my thing. I mean, it's supposed to be good to be tall, so I've chosen to be short and fat. I like to do things a little bit differently. Um, you know, as you can see, you know, everybody wants to look good. Or do they? So this is all what it's all about. Like, we all use computers for the last, what is it, 25, 30 years, or I don't know. I started in 1989. Anyway, so and computers don't make mistakes, and I think that's a bad thing. You know, back in the day, you could spill a bottle of ink, and it would look like something and suggest something, but basically the only thing that a computer can do that is a real mistake is to crash, and nobody wants that. That's no fun. But I want to bring the random in because, as you all know, great things were discovered by mistake, like uh, penicillin and Viagra and Post-it notes. So that's why you all have Post-it notes. So before we go any further, what I want you to do, I hope you all have Post-it notes and pencils, and if you don't, you don't, but I hope you do. Anyway, so take your Post-it notes and draw a tree. Draw, draw a tree, any kind of tree. Hurry up. Shundapua. See, I want to show off that I can speak Swedish. All, all of you are a lot of you are Swedish and showing off your perfect English. Jag kan inte tala så svenska, men jag klarar mig, eller hur? Right? Thank you very much. Anyway, so um, draw a tree. Now draw a dog. It doesn't matter. On the same one, another one, whatever. Okay. Uh, now draw ananas, uh, a pineapple, a pineapple. Step it up. Yeah, okay. Uh, now draw, what should we draw now? Could be anything, just shout it out. A car. a car. Draw a car. It's always a good one. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, so when you're done with these, when, when I'm done, no, no, not when I'm done, when the last speaker is done in this session or this block, then you're gonna, there's going to be a place for you to leave the post-it notes and, okay. But do you all know about the omerta? Do you know what omerta is? It's the mafia code of silence. So I'm going to ask you all to respect that and pretend that nobody's going to see this on the web. It's, it doesn't make sense, but a lot of things don't. Just live with it. Anyway, so just pretend that you don't know that this involves drawing at all, because my workshop does involve drawing, but I don't want people to think it's about drawing, because what it's about is mistakes. Like, this guy, Georges de Mestral, went out in the woods one day in Switzerland. This is in the 1940s, and he uh, got burrs. Carabori, right? burrs, those little spiky plants, stuck on his pants, right? And then he went home and he was playing with them and he thought, what could this be? And then he invented Velcro, you know, karabori about, right? So instead of sitting down at a desk with a white piece of paper and thinking, what this world needs is a new way to stick stuff together, and I'm going to be creative and I'm going to do that, no, something just happened in his life and he decided to, you know, play around with them and then he invented Velcro. Okay, so. It wasn't an intention. I think that it works better. When you want to solve a problem, instead of trying to solve it, not trying works better to take the focus away. Like when a magician is doing a trick and he's like all here and everybody's looking right here, but it's really going on over there, right? That's the idea of misdirection. You know what I mean? So it's something to do about that. You know, you could get all zen about it. I don't, but anyway, it's all to do with taking the focus and effort away. Okay, so there's no stress. And I do that through using speed, not the drug, but the idea of doing things fast. <laughs> nah, not anymore. Doing things fast, so there's no room, there's no time to worry, okay? So in the workshops that I teach, and I teach them for design schools and stuff, but also for people that have nothing to do with design or anything visual. So, for instance, a few years ago, I was going to do this radio show, which is wackadoodle anyway, because it's visual, what I do, but the staff of this uh, show called Studio 360 in New York, where I'm from, invited me over, and before I went and did the workshop for them, the producer of the show calls me up and starts to ask me about, you know, because he's going to ask me questions, the, the host of the show. So he says, you know, like, you could say, well, where'd you grow up, or how'd you come up with the idea, or where'd you go to school, or any number of perfectly good questions. But I said to him, well, well, wait, he said, what if you're not like a visual kind of person, like your job has nothing to do with design? What does this workshop do for you? And I said, good question, radio producer. Let's pretend you're a radio producer. And he says, I'm listening. I said, you know, you could ask all these questions to me, the ones I mentioned, or for one question, you could look at whatever's near, like on your desk where you're sitting, and you just pick that thing up, whatever's near your left hand, you pick that up, and you let that be the question. I'll do it right now, I said to him. 
So I had a novel on my desk I was reading. I don't know what it was. But then on the first, uh, on, on the first word on the left-hand page was gold. So I let that be the question. So I said, Lori, is this something you do underground for art schools and stuff like that? Or is it like a big corporate thing? You go to these corporate retreat, retreats and make zillions of dollars. Now, it might not have been the best question, but it was probably one that he wouldn't have asked anyway, right? So that's the point. So anybody from any walk of life can use the random, not the right thing, not the thing you're trying to get to, but the wrong thing to help you solve problems, okay? So for instance, I was doing this children's book, right? This is a children's book. I'm not selling it. I had to draw, I had to draw, a, I had to draw a, a canary. So what would any of you do if you had to draw a canary? Just get a canary, go down to the pet store and get a canary? What? Google Images. I mean, I bet I, I would be really safe in saying that 90%, maybe 80%, I don't know. I certainly would go to Google Images and you have, press a button and you have a thousand zillion canaries. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Anyway, so uh, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to be like everybody else um, as an illustrator or in any other thing. So what I do, so instead, I do the wrong thing. So now, I want you to start the slides, hit it, and uh, wait, wait, I made a mistake. <laughs> I think I'll start with the movie part. Can we do that? All right, so tiny. Black paper, please. This is my assistant, Tiny. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you stay close by, Tiny. Now, I'm ripping some paper. Does this look like a canary to you? Does it? How about sort of? Wow, you've got a better imagination than I've got. I thought I had a very vivid imagination. Here, I, I kind of like this one. Nah, the first one. What the hell? All right, so this, to me, does not look like no canary. Um, big fat crayon. <laughs> Thank you, Tiny. <laughs> OK, so if you put some legs on it, and then yellow paper, please. I really do this uh, last part in the computer. Let's say this is this because I colored it yellow, still doesn't look like no canary, right? OK. And then orange, oh, I forgot the orange paper. It doesn't matter. Uh, scissors, please. There's the beak. Uh, goopy ink, please. This is my signature stuff. If you buy this, you could draw like me, if that's something that you want. OK. So if you do that, and then you have the word canary in 800-point type, you better believe it's a bloody canary. <laughs> and that's how I work. Thank you. All right, so now, hit it. So I'm going to show you a bunch of, you know, when I go to these conferences, it seems like everybody is like, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. So, it's going to start with the thing about making mistakes on purpose, but it's also going to have a lot of my work that I did. I did this, and I did this, okay? The guy that invented Velcro. And one thing, that slide that you're looking at now, the blank slide, is the most important one, because to me, this is the devil. I never want to see this, and I never want to see that blank illustrator screen. Okay, so what I do is I need a blob. I need a something. I need the equivalent of a burr. Do you know what I mean? So I'm never alone with my limitations. Like, a lot of us are sort of around the same age, except for me, never mind. Anyway, a lot of us, are, it certainly were contemporaries. We're living in the same world, right? We use the same kind of programs when we are on the computer. We watch some of the same movies, you know, uh, Brun and Fabrilsen and all of that. Yeah. Okay. We see some of the same things. We listen to some of the same music. But I don't, I don't want to be in that place, you know? I want to jump out of there and be different, okay? So I think it's very important when you're using a computer, which is a very powerful tool, to do something else, because I think there's more of a difference between, you know, if you're drawing with shoe polish and you're drawing with, you know, with a big fat marker, uh, you have more of your humanity in it than if you're both using a very, very sophisticated computer program. And we all want to be good. We all want to look good, right? Wait a minute. <laughs> 
I need more lipstick. Excuse me. They all want to look good. Anyway, so, and computers don't make mistakes, and we can look really good, and when everything looks finished and perfect and all that stuff. But what's happening with that is that there's no soul in it. And the way you get to the thing with the soul is to do something first and just work in chaos, and then afterwards say, what could it be? And I used to be, in some of these jobs, I work like this, like these, I did with the Illustrator program. And they kind of look like my ex-husband's work, and I don't want that, <laughs> you know? I mean, they're okay, I guess. But what I like is that smush together of something really goopy and organic, you know, like when I use, this isn't going to be on, but it's okay. It's really fun to draw with this stuff. It's like, wah, you know, really organic and bloopy. Or something really, not war, and something really, really strict and graphic. So that's what I'm into as an illustrator. But anybody can use these ideas, no matter what kind of job you do, okay? So you, this didn't really, I wonder why they didn't publish that. I mean, he's a friend of mine and we did it. <laughs> I thought I'd show it here. We did an app together called David's Diary. It's really fun. You're not supposed to sell from the stage. Buy it. Anyway, so uh, it's only $2, so maybe that doesn't count. Uh, in any case, um, what was I saying? Now I forgot, but that's okay. It's mistakes on purpose. I can get away with it. It's like when I was doing comedy, like the worse the crap your life is, the better your material is. So I'm just encouraging you all to sort of get out there and make a Lulu of a boo-boo. It's not like, you know, accepting your mistakes and all that stuff. I'm not interested in that. I really want to, you know, I don't like the expression, like, think out of the box. I want to, like, make a box jump over it and fall on my face, and then think, what could that be, okay? To not be, to not be afraid of that. Now I have a little, yes, oh my God, I missed so many things I was gonna say. But anyway, if you're interested in doing that, it's a really good way to get away from yourself, to not do the things that you normally do and that you're good at, but instead do something, make a real big mistake, and then see what could it be afterwards, to work backwards. I used to be in the closet about working this way. I mean, I never tell my clients this, you know. But sometimes I would just do a collage with red because I liked the way it looked. And you can't tell a client that, you know. And then you figure out, why did I make the red collage? And you go, okay, well, I'll do something about a pizza restaurant that's red and called Pepe Rosso. Okay, so you work backwards and you do what you want to do. And because you know what, my clients, their primary goal in life is not, will Lori Rosenwald have fun today? That's not what they're into. They don't care about me, but I do and I want to have fun. So what I do is I do whatever the hell I want and then afterwards I find a reason why I did it, okay? <laughs> so. I think that everybody can do this, and it's a very good thing. I mean, if you spent, like, if any of you went to design school or architecture school or whatever, I'll talk about that in a minute. If any of you went to design school, it's all about problem solving, right? So if you spend 364 days a year problem solving, which there's nothing wrong with that, and that's a design education, you could spend one day doing things backwards. Just try it, okay? So we're going to collect these uh, little drawings that you do, and then maybe I'll try to find a way to put them up on the web or something like that. And the reason I had that slide about après moi le déluge, or after me the flood, that means when I die, okay, when I die, I really don't care what happens afterwards. I know I should, but maybe it's because I don't have children. So for me, my goal is to deforest the Northern Hemisphere. In my, <laughs> what, is that a problem? No, really, in my workshop, we go through thousands and thousands and thousands and zillions of pieces of paper that we waste, and it's fantastic. I mean, actually, I could really go for a nice, tall glass of graphene right now. Just kidding. Um, it looks so good, right? Anyway, so um, what I would suggest is that you try to do the workshop, or if you can't, do it in your mind, or the next time you have to solve a problem, instead of going from A to B and trying to figure it out and work really hard and be really ductig and clever, what you should do is take the wrong thing, okay, and see if you can make it work for you, okay? So you've all been very attractive. Thank you very much.